let's go back to the summer of 2007. Barry Bonds becomes the home run king, Apple drops the first ever iPhone, and Netflix started streaming. Mmm, gross. Meanwhile, for our summer birthdays, my sibling and I get an Xbox 360, and we were super pumped. But there was this other weirdly shaped thing, and we were like, oh, shit, man, what is it? I don't even know, is it a dog? Nope, it was the new hotness of 2007, Guitar Hero 2. Jamming out to Guitar Hero in 2007 was the absolute pinnacle of entertainment alongside playing Brick Breaker on my iPod Nano. Even though at the time I was listening a little bit less to Iron Maiden, Primus, and Judas Priest, and a little bit more to like, you know, Jimmy E. World and My Chemical Row, hey, they're in here too! Either way, I excitedly booted up the game and immediately failed as hard as I could on the easiest song. Yeah, loser, f you, you'll never be a lead Zeppelin now. But then I spent every waking hour for the next two to three weeks basically just playing the game nonstop, getting better at it and having a phenomenal time. I could eventually play the game on expert and get five stars on every song. And I was getting so close to the end of the campaign with tons of confidence and- Oh my goodness. Now eventually I did come back and beat Freebird on expert with five stars, which is super cool. But you want to know what happened next? I'm so I picked up the real thing, and I'm definitely not the only one, because these little plastic landfillers dominated the Western world for like a hot five years. Guitar Hero and Rock Band were a series of rhythm games developed primarily by Harmonix and Neversoft, and published by Activision and MTV Games. Blah, 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 you don't care about that. No more video essays, just rock and roll! Excellent! You don't need to hear me explain what these games are and how big they were or how to play them. You want a tier list? Who cares? Guitar Hero 3 alone made a billion dollars. <laughs> no, what we're here to talk about today is the sweet lick of this channel's identity. I guess today's video is less about the gaming industry or a specific game even really having a theme and it's more a personal anecdote about something that deeply impacted me and why I think you should go out and buy one of these little plastic nightmares and download Clone Hero for yourself. Because despite their short run before smartphones and music streaming apps basically took music and turned it into this messy genre web, Guitar Hero and Rock Band had a profound impact on culture, society, music, and especially me. Guitar Hero 2 sits right next to Kingdom Hearts on the Mount Rushmore of games that kind of saved my life when growing up and completely influenced my taste in games. And because of Guitar Hero's successor in Clone Hero, a whole new generation of people will forever be able to learn an appreciation and love for music. And that has made all the difference. Something super frustrating I discovered when making this video. Not only did Guitar Hero and Rock Band basically peter out in 2010, but so did a bunch of really interesting stuff talking about them. All these really cool articles about the game helping, you know, stroke victims and amputees and traumatized children went completely dead alongside the popularity of the game. While entries for both would come out in 2015, they were no more an obscure novelty at this point. Some sort of last gasp of air from one of the biggest market oversaturation of all time. I guess it's only fitting that right around the time the housing crisis in 2008 occurred, we saw a lot of North Americans lose out on that beautiful disposable income to afford all this plastic crap. Backwards compatibility with these little monsters did exist depending on what type of guitar and game or drum set you had, but you were still typically expected to buy that new guitar with a fully priced game rather than just using your money to buy cheaper DLC and using the superior guitar, uh, which is this one. And don't mind mine. Uh, <laughs> this is actually the one I originally got with it way back in 2007. Uh, I promise this got broken in 2022 when I just went a little bit psycho mode all over it. So don't worry about it. Makers of Guitar Hero and Rock Band were just like those predatory loan sharks and banks giving out subprime loans. Basically, they were selling guitars and equipment to everyone and anyone who was alive. And when the bottom fell out in like 2010 and everyone realized what a bad investment these were, they took one look at stuff like DJ Hero and basically said, What the fuck are you doing? But not me. 
Guitar Hero 2 was my entry into this genre, one that has only continued with a love for games like Hatsune Miku Future Tone, or Thumper, or even my dearly beloved Kingdom Hearts. But Guitar Hero didn't create a love for music all by itself. Because we adored the music from these games, my sibling and I went out and played guitar and drums respectively for real, and formed a band while in high school. And then fast forward years later, and two bands later, and we still liked coming back and playing the music in the game. Not just in real life, because here's the thing, it's obviously these games don't teach you how to play guitar, and they sort of give you muscle memory, but there's no mistaking the fact that they can give you a deep love and appreciation for music in general. And the legendary demon goblin of a genius that Prince was, how did he not see the inherent value that these games can have? He said that he thinks it's a waste of time, and that kids should learn how to play real guitars. It's like, dude, don't you think hearing Purple Rain or When Doves Cry would incentivize incentivize kids to go learn how to play those songs? Hell, Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin, literally the band that convinced me to try playing music for real, said that he doesn't think Guitar Hero can teach people how to play the real world counterparts. I mean, duh! But especially Jack White, who's always failed the vibe check for me, said way back then that he was disappointed to learn that video games are the most likely venue where younger audiences will be exposed to new works. It's like, they can't go to a bar or buy records themselves most of the time. Would you prefer them to LimeWire your stuff? You wouldn't download a fucking car, would you? Meanwhile, tons of other musicians adored the games and received a massive boon to their sales. Hell, Aerosmith made $26 million from their Guitar Hero game which was more than any of their individual albums ever made. The dudes from Metallica talk openly about their love for the whole legion of new fans garnered from these games and modern conveniences, and damn near every band or artist that has been featured has seen their sales and presence increased due to new people finding out about their music. So suck it, Jack White. Stop acting like a magical bum or I'm a kickflip all over you. Like I alluded to earlier, if it hadn't been for my love of music that Guitar Hero only intensified, I probably wouldn't have picked up a real guitar and gotten serious about it in the first place. I've memorized that love from the game and transcribed it into the physical world. But unfortunately, just like Brian Adams' Summer of 69, all good things must come to an end. A year before my family split up to live out our own fantastic journeys across the country, I had a different kind of birthday. One that continued to center around Guitar Hero. During college, uh, I was living at home with my parents because... What do you mean? <laughs> What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? I'll spare you all the details, but basically the year that I turned 21 was the most turbulent year of my life. Uh, I was in the middle of a spiraling breakup. Uh, the band I was in wasn't really doing much. I had a crummy couple of jobs. School was tough. And I didn't really have a whole lot of friends, which sucked. And on a day that's supposed to be a rager for most people, I basically had no plans and was pathetically by myself. So I went down to my local 7-Eleven having no idea what I'm doing, bought a six pack of Heineken for some reason, and came home to my bedroom to drink alone. It sucked. And it could have sucked more. But then my younger sibling came in and offered to come and hang out with me and have a good time. They suggested that, hey, we're getting older. Why don't we do something nostalgic to celebrate your birthday and make you feel better? And while we tried to figure it out, we realized that there was nothing more nostalgic between the two of us than playing Guitar Hero. So we booted up Guitar Hero 2 and drank all the beers and laughed and had a great time and beat the whole game on Expert in one night. Fast forward to the next year and my life had, you know, improved. Uh, but this time I had no band and no job. That's rough, buddy. So what was I to do? I busted out Guitar Hero, got as drunk as I possibly could, and still beat the whole game on Expert in one night, much to my eventual wife's shock because she hadn't seen me do this yet. So then I did it again the next year, and the next year, and the next day, and the next day. One year actually drinking like 12 beers in one sitting and kind of browning out halfway between like tripping on a hole in a paper heart and beast in the harlot and still exerting some big gamer energy because even though I basically couldn't see anything and was kind of blacked out, I was still beating the game on expert mode and woke up and became lucid somewhere in the middle of Freebird at the very end of the game. If you don't believe me, just check out the save file right here. It says drunk beat it. Look down there, there's all the three stars. And all right, here. I get it! Every year for the last 10 years, this has been my sacred tradition, even though this year will mark the end of it because honestly, all of the equipment is just falling apart and I've discovered that Clone Hero is so, so much better. 
Every now and then, I would mix it up instead of just playing Guitar Hero 2, like I'd play uh, Guitar Hero 1 or Rock the 80s or Guitar Hero 3, which, by the way, on expert mode and being drunk out of your mind is literally impossible. Oh my god, the devil! Oh yeah, and basically, as my life marginally improved every year, so too did the tradition. My wife basically turned it into an event inviting over a bunch of my friends and my family, and we would eat hot wings and drink beer, and everyone would basically just watch me dance around in my sweatpants, which is equal parts hilarious and embarrassing. <laughs> I thank all of my friends and my wife for basically taking what was supposed to be a sad, somber reflection on isolation and turning it into this cathartic feeling of celebration and family. I love all of you so much. Between 2005 and 2010, the proprietors of the Guitar Hero and Rock Band franchises pumped 23 total, mostly full-priced, games into the market. Naturally, these games are easier to make overall since they're essentially just DLC, but this pace was doomed to fail no matter how they released it. Regardless of the overall market climate that America was in at that time, where are the woke-ass articles talking about the environmental harm caused by these things? Because, you know, that's probably very true. Why did science seemingly abandon the possibilities of this technology in conjunction with the market? Where's the rabid fan base clamoring for remakes and the continuation of the franchise? I don't know. Maybe it's because it's expensive and the music industry is very protective of its IP these days. Maybe it's just because most popular music has essentially only shifted towards rap, crappy bro country, and pop as the only true money-making genres left. Unless they make a bro country hero or Kendrick vs. Drake battle game, this trend probably won't revive. But that'd be prime content. Damn. But the good news is, is that the legacy is not gone. While I can't personally recommend everyone go out and buy their own Xbox 360 and all the accompanying equipment, I would recommend, if you can, to buy one of these little plastic guitars and go download Clone Hero. It is so significantly an improved product over Guitar Hero because of modern computers and all that crap. And also, by the way, I am totally vindicated because I used to suck at Raining Blood on Guitar Hero 3, and here I'm like 100%. But even if you don't want to play the games or hunt down a plastic guitar, I would still recommend, if you're interested in the subject, to go check out streamers like Asai or Jason Paradise because the guys that can play this game on stream are literal robots, and they might actually not be human. I will always be thankful thankful to these games for basically teaching me how to love and find new music, rhythm games, and for giving me somewhere to put my feelings on a sad birthday when they had nowhere else to go. Thanks to it and my sibling, I probably avoided a lifetime of drinking alone. I love you, Guitar Hero, and I especially love my sibling. You were the greatest hero of all. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching this whole video and enjoying this thing on Guitar Hero. Obviously, I couldn't use any of the sweet ass music from these games. Um, and since I can't afford to use emotionally manipulative music to make you like me, uh, going ahead and asking you to like and subscribe is the best that I can do, and I just hope that you enjoyed it. Um, if we get to like a thousand subscribers, I will happily take requests. I'll do like a stream, you know, because this was for my birthday. I will happily do like a birthday stream where I'll play like any songs that anybody wants me to play, or I'll cover a song and I'll send it to your mom. This is my